like it's extremely important here for you to look here. It says the there are there are a lot of slogans in the in the in the collage, but uh, four slogans are extremely important, and I'll use those slogans while I'm presenting the the ground situation. The first one is a dream doesn't work until you do. Huh? So only dreaming is not important, but how you are doing it's even more important for us. Do without focusing the end result. A lot of work government do, but without focusing the end result. So we have a lot of example on that. Uh, some things uh, take time. So a lot of promises has done, but it takes time. So it's not we are not in hurry. We'll come again and we'll do them. And the last one, which is also important, pretend you know what you are doing. If it is if it is important, you will find a way. If not, you will find an excuse. So these are some promises, some broad political promises, which actually I pick up from the different uh, areas. Uh, when I start to speak on the land issue and the spatial performance of the government on the land issue, I prefer to say that's the the whole range of conflict, uh, contradiction and conflict, and it's a land flaws most of the time because the law is a political slogan and execution is a political choice. So the land reform agenda as such is not finished, it's still alive and it will be alive until we are on the ground, but it's reducing in the format of political slogan and the political choice, which is one of the biggest challenge we are witnessing in the last 10 years and especially in the last five years. This is the situation, the land rights. It's a game of snake and ladder, we know that once you find the land, and maybe after some years or after a few months, somebody will come and to grab your land. And we have a lot of such examples here. Uh, we can see uh, that some of the processes in the, in the further slide, you can see a lot of land has been transferred in the last four years. I just try to focus the data which is actually related to the last four or five, four or four or five, four or half years. Huh? The question which is actually repeatedly asked, this is the photograph from a Pando community in the Korba district. And when we were in the public hearing, this is the question precisely asked by one of our village leader, whose land are you giving away, Mr. Prime Minister? So is it your land? Is it belongs to you? Or is it belongs to us? And we can see a huge amount of land for the infrastructural project, close to 830,000 hectares of land. For the forestry project, just in the four years, we have lost nearly more than 70,000 hectares of land. And for the urban development, a huge amount of land we lost because of the urban expansion. And we had a lot of examples throughout the India how these processes actually promoted, encouraged through policies, through different legislation, through direct and indirect route, through circulars. And we lost a huge amount of land on the ground. Uh, this is the reality, the another reality of the land reforms. We are retailing the reforms in the form of uh, being a land activist, I say that the housing land rights is not the core area of the land reforms or the land rights. It's, it's a kind of a very part and parcel of the total framework of land reforms. But government has actually given it too much focus on this particular issue by naming housing for all by 2022. And what is the reality of housing by all? Housing for All by 2022. The government itself, if you look at the report which was actually released uh, specifically on the Pradhan Mantri Abbas Yojana, they said that the only 8% of the target has been achieved, 21% and hardly 21% of the fund which was actually allocated for the Prime Minister Abbas Yojana has been used by the state administration. It's a huge amount of gap and this gap is, we can see in the realities, we can see in the form of the conflicts also here. So the whole thought of the land reforms, it's now reduced in the format of Bhavan Swami. So the Bhumi Swami word is missing, and Bhavan Swami word is a new word which is now coming in, 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 in the political discourse here. This is the another reality, what actually government did. Huh? And this is the one slogan which was, uh, I mean, when the smart city project and the smart city mission was started, there was a slogan competition, and this was, the title was a slogan refuse to be ordinary. So uh, being, a, being, a, being a living in Delhi, whether you are in the Silampur, whether you are in Chhatarpur, you have to be proud that you are not an ordinary person. Huh? So that's the, that's the one kind of a political psyche which is actually presented with the whole uh, uh, the dream of a smart city project. 
but the reality which is actually given by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs on the left side you can see the smart city mission has the lowest fund utilization rate among all urban <coughs> schemes or urban scams whatever the word you want to use here so this is this is the huge amount of challenge you can see in terms of the one of the biggest flagship program of the government of India and one of the one of the very important slogan of uh, our dear Prime Minister. What is on the other side? The very recent report which is actually given by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs in 2019, which says close to 6.4 crore people, they live in the slums. Maximum amount of people are in Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh or in the other states. But during the last four years, the ministry has sanctioned close to 72 lakhs houses in the slums. Grounded 38 lakhs, completed 14 lakhs, and 3 lakhs are still vacant. So what is the performance rate? 12%. So the 12% is the performance rate in terms of you are looking to those people who lost their land in the countryside, who came in the big cities for getting job, getting dignified place to live, and this is the, this is the end result on the other side. The Forest Rights Act. We keep talking about the Forest Rights Act, which actually came with a very interesting slogan of uh, undoing historical injustice. But whatever we are doing and whatever the, the new messages which is coming from the political discourse on, from the administration is actually continuing the historical injustice in some other way. Huh? And it's very interesting to look that between 2014 to 2018, and I'm sure Tushar will also agree with me, the one of the slowest execution of Forest Rights Act, whether in terms of individual rights or in terms of the community rights. So the slowest execution period is 2014 to 2018 or 2019, you can say. According to Ministry of Tribal Affairs, the very recent data which was released by the Ministry of Tribal Affairs in 2018, the authority has rejected more than 43% claims filed by the forest dwellers across India. So this is a kind of an average figure, but if you go to the area, where there is a high concentration of tribal people, perhaps you can find that even the, 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 the large number of cases which was actually suspended or rejected. And in a majority of the cases, the notices is not actually given to the claimant. So people have absolutely no option where to go for the appeal. Huh? And that's how it's become a huge amount of challenge. So this is the one side you can see, the one of the slowest execution. But what happened on the other side? 55,000 hectares of forest land has been diverted for the non-forestry project. And what is the rate of clearances of uh, the different projects, the different development projects in, uh, in the forest land? 99.8%, almost like 10% clearance rate. And this is the data which was actually presented to the parliament in 2018 by the Ministry of uh, uh, Environment Af uh, Affairs. Uh, what is the land reforms process? If, if you, if you, I, I remember when the land ordinance first time came and there was a committee which was constituted and uh, the committee was given a place to sit in the constitution club to, to listen all the different stakeholders who were there and when I asked the chairperson, I mean why this land ordinance has came, so he said that it's a process of land reform. So we are very serious about the land reform process and we are going to begin the land reforms process. And that's the understanding of land reforms, which is a completely anti-land reform. We everybody know that the whole ordinance was completely anti. And uh, if you see on the one side, actually the whole ordinance, it's put a huge amount of challenge for any possibility to secure land rights to the landless poor. Uh, when, this, uh, when the whole debate was started for amendment of 2013 legislation, we were the one who actually Given a, given, a, given a submission to the government of India and to the committee, and we said the whole history of 125 years, there's a, not a single case when the land is actually acquired and given it to the poor people. So, because it's not a public purpose. It's not for the public interest. So the people, the actual people on ground, the landless people on ground, they are not the reason for the land acquisition. We know everyone but they are completely out of radar in the whole history of 125 years. So this is the very interesting data which is given by the Rights and Resource Initiative in 2016, that the, how the land-related conflict is actually emerging and it's affecting a large sum of people on the ground. And it's also on the other side, if you take the, the whole vocabulary of the corporate, it's actually affecting the investments. Land bank. Another slogan came in a big way, and uh, we know that the whole idea of land bank started 
with a kind of a popular slogan that we are going to create a land bank so that we can provide job for every those people who actually lost their land in some other way. And we have a chance to talk to the, the Niti IO and previously uh, to, to the Planning Commission and we say that how much, job, how, many, how much job is actually available in the government sector? Close to 2 crores. How much job is available in the private sector? Close to 2.5 crores. So the total job, which is the total job absorbing capacity of the government sector as well as the private sector is not more than maximum 6 to 7 crores. So the huge amount of large sum of people who are actually dependent on land, there is no other way. So this is the one argument which we keep talking about with the planning commission, with the Niti Aayog, with the ministry. And the argument which was given that why you are asking for the land reforms, when the one side the farmers are committing suicide and you are asking for the land reforms. So we say that then what option left? So we want to remove the people out of the agriculture sector. And we know once the people who lost the land in the agriculture sector, there is only one sector left, it's called slum sector. So there is only one sector which is a rehabilitation ground for large sum of people who lost their land in the countryside and this is the reality. The another very interesting legislation which was came uh, with the uh, with the NDA government is the Mines and Minerals Development Regulation Act, uh, 2015, and uh, soon after the Pradhan Mantri Khanish Shetra Kalyan Yojana. So the main argument was sharing the benefit to the affected community and putting those money for the development of the affected area. So the main argument was to use the money which is coming from the mining from the all dirty business and using for the affected community and for the development of the affected area. Huh? And what is the reality? If you see the very recent report of the Ministry of Mining in June 2018, out of the total allocation, rupees 19,955 crores, hardly 21% amount has been actually spent on the ground. Huh? So a huge amount of money which was actually uh, uh, gained from the uh, MMDR legislation and the money is actually, it's not actually the, it's not the data which is actually talked about only about the use, but almost 80% of the money which is came through DMF was actually misused and abused in a big way. Three, four, very classic example, huh? Bilaspur Airport in Chhattisgarh, which was actually built through DMF money, you know. Uh, uh, in in, uh, in, in Kyojhar, the swimming pool was actually made because they, this was an excuse, this kind of excuse. In Rajasthan, they used this money for organizing Pashu Mela. Huh? So we know that this fund has been largely misused and abused. And some of the state, they used this money for the railway corridor, for the corporate corridors, so that they can extract more and more mineral resources and provide to the others. Huh? According to IBM, they have already explored more than 8,000 new sites for the mining operation. So you can imagine that the big amount of mine, I mean a large, a, a large number of mining companies are coming for the extraction business very soon. Uh, legalizing forestation uh, in the way, in the dictionary of the CAMPA and NFP, if you just look the the basic spirit and the basic claims of the CAMPA and uh, uh, the new National Forest, uh, forestry uh, uh, Plan of uh, 2018, there is a huge amount of debate which is actually generated from the ground because these are all new act, new policy which is institution centric on the one side and there is a community centric forest rights act on the other side. So you can see there is a huge amount of debate it's actually generated because of the institution-centric CAMPA and the forest policy and the people-centric uh, Forest Rights Act. The last two slides. As I said in the beginning, that land is a very important agenda for us. It's not, a it's, it's not a finished agenda for us. It's an agenda which keep alive with all of us, with, with our struggle, with our research, with our advocacy work. The four legislation which was keep discussing in the last few years, but it's never been actually executed in the government level. The first one is National Home Estate Land Rights Act of 2012. The draft was prepared, submitted to the Ministry of Tribal, uh, Ministry of uh, Rural Development, accepted by the Ministry of Rural Development, but it's never been presented in the Parliament. National Re Land Reforms Policy, Haksab is here, he was a very instrumental to guide and to inspire all of us to prepare the Land Reforms Policy, never been presented to the Cabinet. So what is the result? 56% of people on the ground are still waiting for their land rights. 
The last is the Women Farmer Entitlement Act. It's a, the one act, very progressive legislation drafted by Swaminathan Ji in 2011, presented in the parliament in the Rajya Sabha, completely silence on this issue. The Minimum Land Holding Act, very few people know, in 2008, when the Balkrishna Rengit Sahib Committee was constituted, he has suggested the Minimum Land Guarantee Act, especially for those communities who are completely out of radar from the Revenue Administration. They are the fisher folk, they are the nomads, they are the single women, they are the tea tribes, there are more than 16 such communities who live on the ground. So, these people, because of the, the huge amount of policy gap, they are still waiting for the land rights to be executed. So, I, I don't think you can read all these things, but I think uh, Pranav ji, when given the chance to our all thematic coordinators, they have presented most of the points which actually I, we would like to say here. And the final, I would say here, for the political slogan, for the, for the, for the political mandate, it's very interesting time for us because after one and a half months, we are entering into one of the biggest election process. So, I remember in Orissa, 2004, when you were walking from Kalahandi to Bhuneshwar, the one slogan which was given in a, in a village called Urla Dani in the Kalahandi district by one tribal leader is a still always remind me that how land is important. And the slogan was very simple and it's a message for most of the, our political leaders as well as all of us. Aage jami paache vote, nahi jami to nahi vote. So first land, then vote. If there's no land, no vote. Thank you.